But one thing turbos don't got for the moment is VTEC. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. Uh, I'm trying out a new segment here, talk about uh, some different topics. If uh, somebody in the comments wants to suggest something for these videos, I can talk about it for a little bit, do a little bit of research, and uh, I'll give an opinion. Um, also, just involving my dog here, his name is Samson. Now, before you think and go and say that I'm using him for uh, views and uh, attention, I would like to just say I'm using him for views and attention. He's really cute, um, and uh, I love him a lot. He's my little buddy, and I hope that nobody complains about uh, him being in the videos. He's just fun to have. He also likes to sit in this middle seat because he's like really scared of all the windows, um, which is kind of weird, but yeah, um, that's Samson. He'll be uh, chilling, probably doing what he's doing right now for the whole video. So let's dive into this. I want to talk about turbos because they're pretty, it's pretty inevitable that turbos are going to take over for the, the time being before electric eventually takes over. Uh, honestly, I don't see a whole big point because automakers are using it to get better gas mileage. And I guess it does look better on paper, but when you drive them in the real world, it kind of just goes to shit because um, you're going to be gassing it more. And I liked Scotty Kilmer's video <laughs> Um, he kind of hates turbos, but he really hates technology. He just screams the whole time. I really recommend watching some of his videos. He's, he's smart, kind of over the top a lot, but smart. He doesn't like turbos because the, like, the stigma that they're going to stress out engines and they'll break and that they spin at hundreds of thousands of RPMs and they'll break themselves. And while that is true, they do spin pretty fast. They uh, put a little bit more stress on the engine. Um, modern engines really don't have that many difficult or that many issues with turbos. They can withstand the power that they make. Um, they're tiny turbos too. So they're not like the old ones that um, they just slap a big turbo on there to get more power. A while back I drove a turbo Volvo S60 owner had zero problems with the thing and had 130,000 miles. Turbo diesels are wildly reliable. New engines are getting new engines are getting a lot better. Uh, you're starting to see even Honda use them, which is kind of surprising, um, considering that they're usually trying to go for the reliability audience. But And even Lexus. Lexus's new LS is a turbocharged V6. But... Um, I'd also like to say that there is a lot of unreliable and shitty um, naturally aspirated engines. And a few that come to mind is the Subaru, and I hate to rag on Subaru because I work for a Subaru dealership, but um, it's got to be talked about the Subaru 2.5 liter. Um, a simple manufacturing switch up in the years of I believe around 2011 to 2015 affected a lot of 2.5 liter boxer engines because um, they made the pistons a little bit smaller and that would allow that would put more stress on the piston rings and would in turn burn oil and would in turn eventually destroy gaskets on the engine uh, specifically the head gasket I believe that wasn't good um, they got Actually, I think they had gotten a lawsuit over it. There was enough people with this issue that they got a lawsuit. And the same thing happened with Ford's Ecotec 2.4 liter. And I believe the Chevy Equinox and uh, some other, maybe some other cars I'm sure used it. But um, they were burning oil like crazy too. Um, also got a, a lawsuit after them. I mean, you can talk about the Pentastar engines really haven't been good. Um, any of the really any of the Fiat design engines haven't been the greatest. And then, yeah, they, they have a lot of, their multi-air turbos have had a lot of issues too. They used to be against turbos because of that reliability reason. Uh, I always saw, thought that they just weren't as reliable. Everything else I could live with. Honestly, I, I've thought about it for a little bit in here. Uh, 
about like why Honda would go to that 1.5 liter turbo. Why not stick with the the legendary K20 engine or even the K24 that could rev to 7,000 RPMs and this one rev to like 8,000 something. Um, that's fun. It's cool. It makes about the same amount of power. Why not? Well, first it does get better gas mileage. Quite a, quite a bit better. I know there's other factors to that, but um, second, a lot more torque. This has about zero torque that comes in never. It's kind of annoying. I'm always shifting later and I, I don't get good gas mileage because of that. And then on top of this, this also takes premium. A lot of turbo engines do take premium. I think in performance vehicles, it makes a lot of sense to have a turbo. But now let's talk about regular vehicles. Do turbos make sense? Um, yes. Yes, they do. Um, Gas mileage, not really, because of that same reason. You're, you're not going to get the same gas mileage, or you're not going to spend the same amount of money because it's going gonna, it's gonna to take premium fuel, more than likely. I believe the new Volkswagen 1.4 liters don't do that. 1.4 turbo, I think, is regular gas, but that's kind of an anomaly. I think in regular vehicles, that torque, the torque is the reason why to get it. I drove a Volkswagen Atlas last week, and... That has a 3.6 liter uh, V6 with all wheel drive. You can't get the two liter turbo unless it's in front wheel drive. So the majority of them right now are selling with the 3.6. And good engine, but it's got to rev really high. And that, and that transmission, the eight speed loves to just hold the revs way down low unless you really smack it. So most of the time it, you got no torque. I encountered the same thing with um, about a year ago when I drove a Honda Accord V6 that um, just would not downshift because the transmission was pretty much pulled straight out of a Odyssey um, minivan. So it didn't want to hold on to the gears and the solution to that is buy a manual but uh, most people won't do that. So I think the, the turbo just makes more sense um, if you're buying an automatic uh, daily commuter because you get the torque you get the torque down low you get reasonable gas mileage but of course it does counteract with the premium fuel but you just you get more power than you usually would and um you you kind of got to appreciate that and i really i like it when i when i go from driving all these subarus with the 2.5 liter um and that when i can hop into a tsi uh, Passat or jetta at the dealership it's it's really, it's, it's nice. I, I like it. Um, you get that torque. It's, it's more peppy. You're really, you're going to get more out of a turbo engine until electric takes over. So I don't know how much longer that is. But one thing turbos don't got for the moment is VTEC. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> You like VTEC, I know you do. Okay, normally on a video like this, I'm gonna try to keep it all in car, but I wanted to add something here. Um, uh, first, if you really care about this, I'd really recommend looking at the US car, uh, Cars World, US World and News Report uh, done about turbo engines. I'll link it below. Look at that, read it. Um, it's just brief, but it's kind of talking about what I'm talking about right now. Another piece of research I think you should do is design news article on uh, turbo engines and they more talk about these small turbocharged engines, which I think I think those are the ones to go for. They're typically put into cars for purposes of fuel economy and emissions, which they, honestly they don't do any better because you're putting in premium fuel, but I, I've already talked about that. Um, but reliability-wise, if automakers are going to do it, um, it doesn't seem to hurt the consumer that much. Navigant researchers told a Design News that there isn't really any evidence showing that the turbo engines are less reliable, at least um, in these smaller forms. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that have had issues with small uh, turbocharged engines, and I'm sure there's a ton of people with issues with naturally aspirated engines. Now I will say in performance variants that can get kind of shaky. Those engines are put on more stress like the 3.5 liter EcoBoost found in the F-150. 
um, Town and Country TV did a video on this, and I think it kind of shows a lot of the ignorance that some people, I think they're probably like lube techs or something, so they maybe they just don't know as much about the actual like specs and stuff. They're just used to working on them, doing tire rotations, oil changes, and whatnot, but um, you know, they're saying like, oh, it's less powerful. That's why I want the five liter V8. I want a V8. That's all I want. The EcoBoost is more powerful or has more torque, a little bit less power. I think 390 horsepower for the V8 and uh, 375 horsepower for the V6, but you're not going to notice that. What you will notice is the 470 pound feet of torque, um, found in the V6 turbo. Those have had more issues than the 5 liter V8. And that's what some of the other people that worked at Ford said. Um, and I believe them. I think that those engines are put under more stress. There is more components there. Just naturally with turbocharged engines, there's more things to possibly go wrong. But I think if you take good care of your car, and I've read this on a 2.3 liter uh, Dissy form, which is a Mazda engine uh, used in the Mazda Speed 3 and Mazda Speed 6. If you take care of the car, whether it's a small engine or a big engine, but let's stick with the smaller turbocharged engines that are being put into passenger cars. If you take care of it and you give it regular oil changes because those turbos definitely need engine oil because they that's what they use to lubricate them, it's really pretty reliable. So my bottom line is, is if you take care of the car, small turbocharged engines are actually just as reliable. Um, if you disagree with me, Please put it in the comments. Tell me your story. I'd like to hear it. Just make sure you come at me with some facts. If you if you agree with me, support me. That's all. That's all I got planned for you today. Please subscribe, um, and you'll get all my videos as soon as they come out. Get the reviews. You'll get this uh, new segment. Hopefully, maybe some other stuff too. Uh, leave a like if you like this. Again, comment. Samson and I will uh, see you on the next one.